Well, it might be old news now, but a few weeks back, Boris Johnson gave his seminal speech at the Tory party conference in the UK, and in it, he talked, as usual, about his aim to level up the country. And if you if you insist on the economic theory behind levelling up, it is consta- it's contained in the inside of Wilfredo Pareto, a 19th century Italian figure uh, who floated from the cobwebbed attic of my, my, my memories. There, there are all kinds of improvements that you can make to people's lives, he said, without diminishing everyone else. Rishi will, I'm sure, confirm this. Uh, We call these Pareto improvements, right? And they are the means of levelling up. And the idea, in a nutshell, is that you will find talent, genius, flair, imagination, enthusiasm everywhere in this country, all of them evenly distributed, evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. And it is our mission as, con- as Conservatives to promote opportunity with every tool we have. So who was Pareto and what are the Pareto improvements that he talks about? And can you really improve the lot of large swathes of the country without impacting others? That's what he aims to do. But is it actually achievable or will always someone lose out? We'll look at all of that today on the Debunking Economics podcast with Professor Steve Keen. And I'm Phil Dobby. Welcome along. So Boris Johnson has talked relentlessly in the UK about levelling up so that everyone has equal opportunity and nobody goes without that opportunity. And he's uh, going to put that in place uh, right across the country. He started by actually making sure that everybody pays the same amount of increases in tax, irrespective of how much they earn. Everyone's going to get a one and a quarter percent increase uh, on their national insurance contributions. So I'm not sure if that's levelling up or not. And not a good start, I would have thought. But look, he's quoting there the work of the Italian 19th century economist, Will Fred Do Pareto, saying he argued that there are all kinds of improvements you can make to people's lives without diminishing anyone else. But I wonder whether that actually, so basically he's saying the rich can get richer without the poor getting poorer and the poor can get richer without impacting the rich. But I wonder whether he's got the wrong end of the stick here because uh, the Pareto principle is the original 80-20 rule. That's what Pareto is na- known for, coming up with the 80-20 rule. Basically, take almost any- anything and 20% of people will account for 80% of it. Pareto's an original observation of, of this was that in Italy at the time, 80% of land was owned by 20% of the population. Now, you can't fix that up with levelling up, can you? Because you can't give land to the 20% without the 80% losing out. So Pareto is arguing... The exact opposite of Boris, what Boris Johnson thinks he is arguing. So I wonder whether either Pareto was confused or Boris has got the wrong end of the stick. Either way, uh, it's not a straightforward scenario, is it, Steve King? Yeah, I mean, this is, Pareto is a, a, a classic case of that. Because this, I mean, Pareto optimalities. It, I mean, I've got to think. It was a Goebbels or said when I hear the word culture, I reach for my revolver. Uh, when I hear the word Pareto optimal, I reach for mine. Uh, but the funny thing is Pareto was an engineer, not an economist initially. And with an engineer's training, he did observation, which is a radical thing that, of course, economists are far too smart to do. They're much better <laughs> to sit in an armchair and theorize. Um, but Pareto observed that 80-20 rule, and that became... Uh, uh, it's called Pareto's Law. It's also called a ZIF Law, Z-I-P-F, I think it is, ZIF Law, and it's called a Power Law. And that is that when you look at a distribution of something, the 80-20 rule is a nice way of summarising it. 20% have got 80%. That means 80% have 20%. What you get is if you if you plot that on a, on a, uh, a normal graph, you get this very, very uh, curvy... Like if you start from uh, the people, the poorest... At, at one extreme, let's say you have the poorest at the um, um, the beginning, the, the, your X, where your X and Y lines intersect, you've got the poorest. And then you uh, simply plot linearly uh, from the 0% of the population to 100, and then vertically 0 to 100 or whatever you're talking about, you're going to get a curve which is really flat and then accelerates rapidly up to the top. But if you then plot that line using logs, so you rather than going, one, going 0, 10, 20, 30, 30 out to 100, you go uh, effectively uh, 0. 0.0001, uh, 1, 10, 100, and likely on the on the vertical axis, sort of, you know, 1, 10, 100. So it becomes divisions. a straight line. You know, you know. It becomes a straight line, yeah. 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 And that's, that's called Pareto's Law. And that mm. is a remarkably important and, and deep uh, insight into the nature of 
uh, of not just human systems but natural systems we find this law applying everywhere uh, and like Blair Fix I think it'd be the if, he, if he was one of one of our patrons yeah. and one of his yeah. supporters yeah. he's probably the one of the world's leading experts on that now well, so and we spoke to him about stuff. which is arguing exactly against what Boris Johnson is saying I mean because yeah because uh, Blair's point was that it's you know that it the, the, the power is established isn't it you know there's a hierarchy hmm. uh, we, we're stuck with it and uh, you, you can't fight against it because it's it's almost law yeah, but that, 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 that's that's the empirical observation that Pareto made, and you know, you mm. know hats, hat off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he also came up with this idea of a de- definition of an optimal outcome, outcome. which yeah. we, we, and when, when we, you can't make anybody else better off without making somebody else worse off, and that's called Pareto optimal. Now you could have that situation, you know, where uh, one person in a country uh, is you know uh, being has every everything and somebody else has nothing and you can't improve the if you make the person who's got nothing better off then you make the person who's got everything worse off so you might as well let the person who's got nothing starved to death uh, you know but this it, is not it, what it, Boris it, Johnson was arguing he was arguing that Pareto's optimal outcome is that one person can be better off so, so long as nobody is worse off so in other words you can improve someone's lot without it impacting anybody else so was yeah, which, which is which is a denial of the existence of a class system, yeah. which is a classic thing for an upper class English toff to uh, to deny exists. You know, so it, 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 this this is part of what one of the many things that irritates me about neoclassical economics. That on the basis of being non ideological, they've ruled out the existence of classes, but classes exist. Mm. Now, there are people who make their income primarily from labour. There are people who make their income primarily from owning capital or owning land. Uh, there are people who make their money primarily from being bank, sorry, bankers. Um, and, and therefore, you have a class-based distribution of income and you will have class conflict over the distribution of income. It's, it's a given in a, in, a, in a capitalist society that that will exist. But it's getting but weaker, what, isn't it? I mean, you do have, if you had good education and opportunity for everybody, which I think is what uh, Boris is, uh, is arguing, uh, I think he's just he's got his timeline wrong. If, but if you had the opportunity the same for everybody, then you could you, you could diminish that class effect, couldn't you? So you could be a, a, a working class lad who goes to a good university, gets a good education, and gets and gets a a job based on his education rather than his, his background, and that they've moved up the rung of the ladder in in one generation. It might take money. You know, I could look at my own family. You know, I'm not a painter and decorator, which is what you know, my family was two generations ago. Because I got a decent education, so I've I've moved up the ladder a little bit. So you do you do see it happening? It, it does happen, and it, you know, no argument. There is you know, class mobility in capitalism, but it's overblown at the extent to which it happens. Mm. And like you know, I'm I'm a I'm a middle I'm a son of a middle class. My father was a bank manager. Uh, I'm I'm a professor, uh, but you know nobody's become fab- fabulously wealthy in my family, including me. Um, so, you, but you do get, you know, like the Elon Musk's of the world is the ludicrous, the ludicrous example of maybe a plaid example of of, uh, of, of that uh, trans, uh, you know, going from, from rags to riches, and there are uh, plenty of others uh, examples as well. They do exist, but they are a minority compared to the vast majority who start in one social class and, and that's where they finish up. Uh, my my favourite, uh, you know, being not not uh, the working class but uh, the upper classes. One of my favourite cartoons of all time was in Punch. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times, but it had two very portly, obviously very uh, very wealthy men sitting in a uh, in big armchairs, and the one says to the other, "The secret of my success, Charles, is some advice my father gave me as a son. He said, son, here's a million dollars. Don't lose it.'" <laughs> Which isn't always that easy, is it? I mean, look at Donald Trump, for example. He had a he lost it. Yeah, he got his money from Fred Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and lost more than he he made, uh, arguably during his his lifetime as well. So, yeah. uh, so so is is Boris wrong on this? Then is he is he is he flogging a dead horse, or is it a case of we are all actually better off than we were, say, a hundred years ago? You know, we've got automation, electrification, we've got transport, we've got heating, so our standards have improved. The divide 
yeah, might have narrowed a little bit, probably not a great deal. So I wonder if Boris just aims to make people feel better off without actually doing it, which, of course, is, you know, like you know, making... Well, you're making accusing a, Boris of being a charlatan. And when a politician... How? Wash your those mouth words, out that, with, uh, with, those, with the, blonde hair rinse. <laughs> those, those, uh, those words are interchangeable, but, yeah, politician. I mean, <laughs> in, the, in the way that Margaret Thatcher hey, made... Hey, what should I'm about to become one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, the, the, well, there we are, you see. Uh, we'll see how, that, see how that changes you. Uh, but, um, yeah, <laughs> Like, like Margaret Thatcher, you know, t- trying to make everybody feel better by making them be able, uh, supposedly be able to afford to buy houses by introducing heavy debt into their lives. So well, uh, the, the, it, it yeah. can all be done with smoke and mirrors. Well, then that's what it is mainly smoke and mirrors, and and the whole idea that you that you can you can do that this can be done as policy as well. I mean, international trade policy, which we were talking a bit about last week. Um, uh, one of the arguments is that you know free trade doesn't benefit everybody, but it's okay to go ahead if the winners can compensate the losers. Now, do those mechanisms exist? No. Okay, so it, it, it's a smokescreen in many ways to say we just want to deregulate everything. And when you deregulate, you're not getting rid of regulations. You're making up new ones that benefit the people who own capital. Mm. Um, and there's another aspect to this as well, uh, which we discuss in the full version of this podcast, which is when you uh, put a ceiling on the level of production or the level of consumption, same thing, uh, which we're now seeing with climate change. Uh, if you can't just keep on adding to the to our uh, produce, then somebody has to lose out. If if suddenly consumption goes up in one part of society, it has to go down in another part of society. We look at all of that in the full version of this podcast. To hear that, you need to subscribe at debunkingeconomics.com or become a supporter of Steve Keen on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash prof Steve Keen. That's it for this week, though. See you again next week for another one. Thanks for listening. Bye.